So 9.4 chapter that is chromosomal aberrations. Chromosomal aberrations. So there is uh, 11th chapter. So which is 11.1 and 11.2. Basically it is 11th chapter. So which has direct correlation with the chromosomal aberrations or whatever the basics we discussed. The chapter name is called Reproductive and Demographic Anthropology. Reproductive and Demographic Anthropology. So, Reproductive and Demographic Anthropology. So, Reproductive Anthropology has two dimensions. And demographic anthropology basically demography means the total population of any society or nation. So total population of any nation or state we call as a demographic anthropology. So that means variations occurring in the total population that is birth rate, death rate or migrations or natality, mortality. There are some factors which collectively influence the demography of a nation. If a nation has the high birth rate when compared to death rate, the population always increases. If a, if a nation has the high death rate when compared to birth rate, the population of that nation declines. So this is how the biological factors which influence the total demography of a nation that that is one aspect and what are all these biological aspects reproductive related aspects which influence the fertility natality mortality so this is the another aspect so here you should blindly follow this chapter every year so every year there is a question from this chapter so today we are going to discuss about only certain basics in this chapter so for exam point of view, it is little relevance. So little relevance. Today's class is for exam point of view, little relevance. That doesn't mean it won't come in the exam. Sometimes if the examiner is a some kind of, uh, you know, you wanted to make a, a toughest question paper, he might pick this kind of unconventional questions also. So is it visible to you? Okay. So what are all those today's topics? So cytogenetics. And serogenetics. Cytogenetics and serogenetics. So what do you mean by cytogenetics and what do you mean by serogenetics? What do you mean by cytogenetics and what do you mean by cytogenetics? So, cytogenetics itself is a branch. <clears throat> Serogenetics itself is a branch. These are all the two sub-branches within the genetic studies. So, cytogenetics or cytology means study about the cells. Study about the so organs and organs are composed with cells. So that is structurally and functionally. So structurally and functionally. And we are discussing about reproductive anthropology. So cytogenetics, cytogenetics of male reproductive reproduction system. So cytogenetics of female reproductive system. Cytogenetics of male reproductive system male reproductive system cytogenetics of female reproductive system female reproductive system so that means here generally cytogenetics is nothing but study about the cells within the organs structurally as well as functionally 
but when we are talking about many systems are present in our body like respiratory system you know circulatory system nervous system so this this kind of various systems are there but we are discussing about the chapter reproductive anthropology here cytogenetics of male reproductive system cytogenetics of female female reproductive system means what are all the organs what are all the organs or cells present in the male reproductive system female reproductive system and their structures and functions and their structures and functions so similarly male and similarly for female so there are some other topics in the syllabus cytogenetics and serogenetics of male and female reproductive system male and female reproductive system and other subtopics are menarche and menopause menarche menopause and so you know uh, various theories various theories of demographic changes various theories of demographic changes and various factors influencing various factors influencing natality natality more uh, no natality mortality natality mortality fecundity fecundity fertility so these are all the various subtopics from which only exam coming to being so this topic is uh, till now least uh, touched by the exam cytogenetics and serogenetics but the relevance of menarche in the uh, demography the relevance of menopause in the demography the relevance of you know uh, fecundity and fertility in total uh, demography so this is how they will focus on the remaining areas but this is for understanding what do you mean by menarche how it happens when it happens to understand the further concepts we need the study of cytogenetics and serogenetics of the male and reproductive system so what do you mean by serogenetics so cytogenetics means simply what system we are talking about that is reproductive system within the reproductive system what are all the constituent units such as cells organs so those who structures and functional studies nothing but a cytogenetics then what do you mean by serogenetics in male reproductive system serogenetics in female reproductive system so sero means serum so serum generally present in the blood so serum contains various hormones so various hormones that means what are all the various hormones their functions in female reproductive system what are all the various hormones in male uh, organs or male cells producing what are all its functions so these study that means hormonal study in female reproductive system hormonal study in male reproductive system that we called as a serogenetics because these hormones are present at the serum in the blood understand so now we will focus on first what we will discuss male or female so now you got clarity right serogenetic means what we have to write cytogenetics means what you have to write so now female uh, cytogenetics so cytogenetics of female reproductive system female reproductive system then after we will look at the serogenetics of the female reproductive system so cytogenetics means it is about the study about female reproductive anatomy so female reproductive anatomy so repro female reproductive anatomy so that means all the glands all the organs all the things produce uh, contain the reproductive uh, female reproductive anatomy so here we can divide into external organs 
external organs means that we can visualize through our eyes external organs plus internal organs plus internal organs so what are all the external organs so external organs constitute so libya so libya majora first one second one libya uh, minora libya minora third one bartholin glands bartholin glands and fourth one clitoris so these are all the external which can be visible to our eyes external parts of the female reproductive system so externally visualizing is like this so this, there are various layers are there so somewhere else here top clitoris is there so outer one we call as a major no major so labia major inner one we call as a minora okay labia majora labia minora so here we call as a clitoris and fourth one is bartholin gland so somewhere else inner labia uh, no minora inner side minora so labia minora there is bartholin glands so bartholin glands so this is how we have to first identify and what functions are there so what are all the each function served by the and the at the same time so we can also write the internal structure internal organs also so internal organs are so internal organs are we can write it like So this is internal organs of the female reproductive system. So here you can see, so this we call as a fallopian tubes. So fallopian tubes. So this we call as a ovaries. Ovaries. So two ovaries are present in female. And this we call as a uterus. uterus so this we call as a vagina so vagina so this is external appearance so this is external appearance somewhere else labia majora and inside labia minora bartholin glands and clitoris everything is present outside so this is the where this tip of the portion externally visible and these are all the internal organs external organs of the female internal organs of the female so it's like a uh, contains so many ovas. Okay. So now we will see what are all the functions of major, uh, no, libia majora. So, so that means external thick skin fold, external thick skin fold, which we call as a labia, uh, labia majora. So which function as protecting the internal one. Okay. So this external layer or skin fold that we call as a labia majora, major function is protecting the internal organs. So protecting internal organs. Understand? So what about that labia minora? These are all the small slip, uh, small lips. So they basically connect the 
so inner you know inner libya or libya minora its function is connecting the this vagina vagina up to lower part of the uterus so this is the lower part of the uterus also called as a cervix so also called as a cervix connecting the that means inner or labia minora so that is the inner layer which function is connecting the external vagina into the internal uterus that is the second function of the labia minora and third one is bartolin glands so bartolin glands they secrete the mucus they secrete the mucus which present inside the vagina as well as reached into the uterus also so clitoris are sensory organs clitoris are sensory organs so they are stimulating in nature so this is the external parts of female reproductive system and and their functions and their functions okay so now we will move to the internal one so internal are this is the region where vagina we call as a intercourse generally happens so intercourse or sexual activity generally happen at the vagina lower part so here the sperms are generally carried into the uterus from vagina to uterus the after sexual activity uterus it will go to the sperms moving sperms moving understand so now we can see that so this fallopian tubes beside our uterus sides we have a ovaries so these ovaries primarily produce the ovas so these ovas are penetrate into the fallopian tubes and they started their journey towards the bottom ward so bottom ward so if the sperms fertilized with the ova within the fallopian tubes so fertilization so fertilization generally happens in the fallopian tubes generally happens in the fallopian tubes understand so that means once somewhere else like here ova is there this ova is fertilized with the sperm and these downward movement and they attach to the uterus walls uterus walls that is called fertilized egg attaching the uterus wall we call as a implantation of the or implantation implantation per se once that is implanted the cell starts to divide this uh, you know uh, fertilized egg cell starts to divide that is mitosis and it acquire the growth and it acquire the growth so for suppose there is no intercourse and there is no sperm release into the uh, female reproductive organs that is vagina or uterus so there is no fertilization so this ova already here there is a thinning or uh, no a thickening of the mucus is there the mucus that means when the ova release the uterus prepares a mucus thick layer which has the nourishment capacity so nourishment capacity that means when fertilized is happen when the egg is fertilized immediately to divide the uh, fertilized egg into mitosis cell division it requires nourishment understand in our cell division also we had observed that before entering into the cell division cell acquires most of the nutrients to continue its activity during the cell division phase so similarly the fertilized egg immediately it want to divide it requires a nourishment that nourishment is supplied by the mucus inside a uterus understand so if there if it is if it is a fertilized egg mucus is nourish giving if there is no fertilization these ova along with mucus they shed out of the body that we call as a menstruation so this is a 28 days cycle so 28 days cycle understand our monthly cycle we called our menstruation uh, menstrual menstrual cycle we called so this is all about in nutshell female uh, uh, reproductive organs so if you observe that if you observe that there are three primary stages are there in female cytogenetics 
So three primary stages. First one is follicular phase. Follicular phase. The second one is ovulation phase. So ovulation phase. And third one is, you know, third one is luteinizing phase or luteal, luteal phase. So luteal phase. So generally in female, these three stages are there. Follicle phase, ovulation phase and luteal phase. What do you mean by follicle phase? So follicle phase, to understand this follicle phase, so female ovaries, female ovaries, these are all present in both sides. Somewhere else like, so here it is connected to fallopian tubes. So fallopian tubes female ovaries. So here these ovaries are circulated by the blood. So somewhere else in the brain hypothalamus hypothalamus which is secrete a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone. So this hypothalamus gonadotropin releasing hormone trigger the pituitary so pituitary, under the influence of gonadotropin releasing hormone, pituitary releases three, uh, no, two important hormones, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone. So this releasing of FSH by the pituitary and the reaching of this FSH hormone from the pituitary through blood to the place called ovary, that, we, that is the starting of the follicular phase follicular phase. So follicular phase means, so touching of the FSH hormone released by the pituitary into ovaries. So why it is uh, reached to the ovary? Because here rudimentary, so rudimentary ovas are there. So they are not matured ovas. Rudimentary ovas are present in the female during her fetus stage. The number of ovas in female are fixed. It might be like two to two or three millions during our birth. But during the fetus time, there are seven million ovas are present. So fetus, that means an, a woman in her fetal period or in her embryo period. So that is prenatal stage. So every woman started as a fertilized egg. Later she grown into embryo and later fetus. These three stages we call as a prenatal stage. Post delivery, infancy. No, childhood, adolescence. No, adulthood, old age. This is how an individual growth phases. Right? So that means during the prenatal stage itself, prenatal stage itself, there are some over, uh, no, rudimentary ovaries are formed and present inside a ovaries. So these rudimentary ovas are after reaching that uh, gall into adolescent years. Adolescent years. So in this adolescent years, these two hormones starts to secrete by the pituitary. So these FSH when reach to the ovaries and this rudimentary ovas are started to maturing that process we call as a follicle stimulating. Understand? So FSS means follicle-stimulating hormone. So the rudimentary ovas are stimulated by the this hormone, that process we call as a follicular phase. So that means here, during the birth of the baby, okay, so before birth, 7 million ovas are, rudimentary ovas are present. Okay, after birth, 2 to 3 million ovas are present. By the time of reaching puberty of a girl, only 30,000 ovas are present. 30,000 ovas are present. That means the remaining were died off in ovaries itself. So these 30,000 ovas in every month, 
ట్వంటీ టు థర్టీ సో ట్వంటీ టు థర్టీ ఓవర్స్ ఆర్ కంపీటింగ్ టు రిలీజ్ ఇన్ టు సింగిల్ ఓవర్ సో ద మీన్స్ వెన్ ఎవర్ దిస్ ఎఫ్ఎస్హెచ్ హార్మోన్ రీచ్ టు ద ఓవర్ ఈస్ సో హియర్ బై ద టైమ్ ఆఫ్ ప్యూబర్టీ హౌ మెనీ ఓవర్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ ప్రజెంట్ ఇన్ ఉమెన్ థర్టీ థౌసండ్ ఇన్ దిస్ థర్టీ థౌసండ్ immediately whatever received by this fsh hormone 20 to 30 ovas they trigger into maturity okay so out of this 20 and 30 one is dominating so one is dominating and the remaining were suppressed remaining was suppressed so this single ova dominated over the rest of the 19 or 29 it reached into the fallopian tube so it reached into the fallopian tube so this one from ovary to fallopian tube and this process we call as a ovulation process so ovulation process so this fsh when stimulated this 20 to 30 ovas the ovary is understood that okay so these stimulated follicles they starts to produce oestrogen hormone so oestrogen hormone that means where this oestrogen hormone produced in female means inside the ovaries when these in, uh, you know oestrogen uh, hormone produced when the follicles triggered the matured follicles only release that means 30000 ovas are there this 30000 ovas all ovas never produce testosterone whatever the ovas which is stimulated for release through which only testosterone hormone uh, you know estrogen hormone produces so these estrogen hormone controls it give the feedback to pituitary feedback to pituitary stop releasing of fsh and hypothalamus stop releasing of gnrh gonadotropin releasing hormone why if the hormone is continuously secreted by the hypothalamus as well as the uh, pituitary so the ovus maturity is continuous process so that means monthly only one to be released if every day many number of ovus are mature within one month or one year all 30000 ovus are depleted from the body to stop that process whenever uh, uh, estrogen hormone levels increased by the stimulated follicles that 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 estrogen hormone give negative feedback to the pituitary as well as the hypothalamus stop secreting the fsh as well as the gonadotropin then fsh hormone levels drop from the body understand so before maturing of the follicles or rudimentary ovas fsh hormones are heavy in our in female body once uh, 20 to 30 ovas got matured okay so these matured ovas produce or uh, no estrogen hormone the production of the estrogen hormone directly link with the production of the fsh fh hormones are further declined understand further declined so this process we call as a follicular phase so what are the important steps in the follicular phase so follicular phase two important hormones are there under the influence of gonadotropin releasing hormone from hypothalamus hypothalamus to you know this hormone reach to the pituitary so pituitary releases pituitary gland releases two hormones fsh and lh so this is the first stage in the follicular uh, follicular phase the second one so these fsh stimulate 15 to 20 eggs 15 to 20 eggs so these 15 to 20 eggs stimulate production of so estrogen hormone so estrogen hormone fourth step so estrogen hormone give negative feedback negative feedback for brain then fh levels drops fh levels drops so this is the general 
so this is general only one matured one matured ova released into released into fallopian tubes so fallopian tubes understand so this is called fallopian uh, follicular phase understand so what would happen in the ovulatory phase so this is the first day of monthly cycle okay first day of the monthly cycle starting of releasing gonadotropin releasing hormone and releasing of the fsh and lh hormones we consider as a starting of monthly cycle so all this process takes approximately 14 days all this process uh, takes approximately 14 days within the 14 days the ova released from ovary into fallopian tubes so after 14 days where is the ova in fallopian tube so fallopian tube means it is a long long one it has to set a journey in this process whatever the things happen that we call as a ovulatory phase so ovulatory phase so ovulatory phase in ovulatory phase what happens so ovulatory phase generally you can see in ovulatory phase lh hormone so luteinizing hormone what we call is luteinizing hormone so luteinizing hormone so is cause for the release of egg release of egg from over it to fallopian tube fallopian tube then who produces this luteinizing hormone so luteinizing hormone was produced by so pituitary because fsh and lh so fsh role is maturing the ovas lh role is releasing the ovas into fallopian tube that you should remember okay so during the same time during the same time so this uterus it prepares the so increase amount and thickness of mucus so mucus secretion in cervix or lower part of the uterus lower part of the uterus why because the ova has set journey into the fallopian tube under the influence of luteinizing hormone ova released into fallopian tube and it started their journey from in, within the fallopian tube so the, during this time if fertilization happen immediately the egg to be implanted so implanted egg immediately requires nourishment so this cervix released uh, you know mucus we call as a nourishment for the nourishment for the implanted egg if there is no uh, fertilization and implantation the ova along with this mucus they shed out in every month that we call as a menstrual cycle so this is the ovulation uh, phase ovulation phase occurs under the influence of luteinizing hormone so fsh hormone uh, used for the maturing the uh, 22 or oh no 30 eggs that is the second one so the third one is so luteal phase so luteal phase is starts with so luteal phase starts with after ovulation starts after ovulation after ovulation so generally you should remember within the ovary within the ovary this is the one of the ova or egg so this egg has the shell so releasing of ova means the egg comes out of the, the egg comes out of the shell and this is the shell so this enters into the fallopian tube this enters into the fallopian tube what about this shell the shells are converted into corpus cells 
Understand? So there is important cells here, the empty follicles. That means this is the follicle cell. Within the follicle cell, there is a egg. If the egg is separated from the follicle cells, that we call as a empty follicle cells. So these empty follicle cells later turn into a corpus luteum or corpus cells. So these corpus cells secrete the progesterone hormone. This corpus cells secrete the progesterone hormone. So this corpus cells secrete the progesterone hormone. So this progesterone hormone has the important function of fertilization, fertilization and implantation. Implantation. So if there is no fertilization, so these corpus, uh, you know, uh, corpus luteum cells, okay, corpus luteum cells, mucus plus ova together shed out. Understand? Together shed out in every 28 days. So if there is a fertilization, so then the corpus cells produce, uh, you know, this kind of progesterone hormone as well as, uh, you know, implanted egg at the mucus, they start to dividing into a mitosis cell division. So mitosis cell division, that we call as a fertilized egg. Fertilized egg followed by embryo. So embryo followed by a fetus. So after nine months of the fetus, the delivery or post natal phase comes into being. Post natal phase come into being. So here there is one hormone called HCG. So HCG hormone. Generally there are some pregnancy kits are there. Pregnancy kits are generally... So human chorionic gonadotropin, human chorionic gonadotropin, gonadotropin. So this HCG hormone, HCG hormone we call as a human chorionic gonadotropin. So the fertilized egg, when it starts to dividing the mitosis cell division, so during that stage, the fertilized egg mitosis cell division releases one hormone called HCG. So HCG hormone generally used for the pregnancy kits. So pregnancy kits are made such a manner it detect the traces of HCG hormone. So HCG hormones are released by a fertilized egg in its mitosis cell division. Understand? So this is all about the various hormones. So what are all the major hormones? So what are all the major hormones means? Gonadotropin releasing hormones by hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. So its function is you know, triggering the pituitary. Triggering the pituitary to release FSHLH. So FSH function is follicles stimulating. So follicles stimulating and making them mature and leaving the follicle shells. Follicle shells that later convert to corpus cells. Corpus cells. So LH hormone function is so releasing the releasing the ova or egg from ovary to ovaries to fallopian tube. Fallopian tube. So here FSH under the influence of FSH estrogen hormone produces. So estrogen hormone produces. Okay. So these 
corpus cells these corpus cells produces corpus cells produces progesterone hormone progesterone hormone so estrogen hormone in maturity of the egg progesterone hormone in fertility helps fertility helps so this is maturation so this is helps in fertilization fertilization so these lh released into the fallopian tubes at the same time mucus are present in the uterus this mucus is for nourishment if there is no fertilization this mucus along with corpus cells plus mucus and egg together releases that we call as menstruation cycle understand so if fertilization happened if fertilization happened the dividing fertilized egg releases hcg hormone hcg hormone so this is called cyto oh no serogenetics serogenetics of the female reproductive system female reproductive system so cytogenetics means identifying the various organs so structurally functionally what these organs are doing so serogenetics means what are all the hormones produced by the female body which related to the reproductive uh, activity so it starts with the hypothalamus enter into the pituitary through which ovaries ovaries secrete the three important hormones hcg estrogen and progesterone okay so gonadotropin hormones it can be divided into three types of or two types of hormones gonadotropin hormones so gonadotropin hormones means so they are the precursors of no uh, the sex hormones gonadotropins are precursors so without having without having these gonadotropins the sex hormones never released precursors of sex hormones so what are all those the first one is gnrh and fsh and lh so these are all the gonadotropin hormones are precursors of the sex hormones then what are all the sex hormones are hormones produced within the ovary sex hormones are hormones produced by the ovaries hormones produced by ovaries so uh, estrogen progesterone and c uh, no human chorionic uh, hcg so these are all the sex hormones are produced at the ovaries so this is the serogenetics of female reproductive organ so the uh, the significance of these serogenetics and cytogenetics of the female reproductive organ so very less in the exam very less in the exam point of view very less in the exam point of view but if that examiner is wanted to make difficulty question paper from this 11th chapter 11th chapter they might touch the serogenetics and the cytogenetics of the female reproductive organ so very simple steps identify the various parts and explaining each part to function is cytogenetics so what are all the hormones related to the reproductive organ that explanation is nothing but a so serogenetics understand so there is one more process associated with the female that is oogenesis so oogenesis this also you have to integrate so oogenesis so oogenesis means releasing of ova so releasing of ova releasing of ova which is a gamete which is a gamete have 23 chromosomes gamete have 23 chromosomes so all chromosomes of the oogenesis oogenesis is the process of so releasing of ova or making of ova in ovaries 
so which has 23 chromosomes each ova has a 23 chromosomes and the sex chromosome is always x so already i told you there are uh, you know 7 million 7 million eggs are present in female ovaries in prenatal stage prenatal stage that means a baby or prenatal baby is a female gender she has nearly 7 million eggs when the baby delivered so delivered that baby the 7 million eggs are reduced into 2 to 3 millions that means while the age is passing while the age is passing number of the ovas reduced in the competition or they die out only potential ovas are only survive and after reaching the puberty after reaching the puberty only 30,000 ovas are present 30,000 ovas are present within that every month within that every month 20 to 30 eggs are releasing 20 to 30 eggs are releasing so so and final conclusion also i'm giving 20 to 30 eggs are giving so at a maximum a female undergoes 500 monthly cycles in her entire life a female undergoes 500 monthly cycles that means only 500 eggs are released 500 eggs are released and whatever the eggs those are all uncapable of eggs so those eggs are uncapable for fertilization they dies out when the woman reach to the menopause menopause and these 500 eggs are luckiest eggs which are all useful for fertilization so this is total reproductive or no uh, female or uh, uh, no uh, number of ovas from that means they begin to formation during the fourth week of the fetus development so the ovas are present in the female since her fetus stage that is fourth week so fourth week that means during the embryo development regionalization or fetus development the fixed number of ovas are coming to being in the female and this is how they reduce over a period of time and finally menopause occurs and whatever the left ovas after menopause completely dies out and the female could not able to produce ova and children understand so this means that means the ovas are suddenly not coming in the puberty they are present during the prenatal stage and they you know that means how it was present in the prenatal stage how it was present in the prenatal stage that we called as a oocyte primary oocyte that means when the ovary is formed within the ovaries these ovas are there these ovas are generally 2n in number understand so 2n means 46 chromosomes 46 chromosomes understand 2n in number 46 uh, chromosomes this stage we call as a oogonium so oogonium i am discussing about before birth so before birth how female ovaries contain the eggs so oogoniums are present oogoniums are have 46 chromosomes so this oogoniums undergo mitosis so each oogonium undergo mitosis so mitosis resulted into two daughter cells each one has two n in number so two daughter cells two n in number so this is called mitosis so this is each daughter cell undergo meiosis 1 meiosis 1 and arrested arrested at metaphase 1 metaphase 1 so this also meiosis 1 metaphase 1 metaphase 1 so that we call as a 2n in metaphase 1 also we have 2n understand so this is the stage all the ovas of 
टू टू थ्री मिलियन बिफोर बर्त बिफोर बर्त आल दोवर वो वास् इन सैड द Uh, you know, in uh, prenatal or inside the fetus are present at the meiosis one and arrested at the metaphase one. So in meiosis process, meta meiosis one as meiosis two, meiosis process the one and two. In meiosis one, metaphase one, we have all the chromosomes are paired as homologous and forty six chromosomes are present. So that was the stage cell division got arrested. Understand that is the stage cell division got arrested. Understand this is that means every ova up two to three million, or else we can say by the time of woman reaching the uh, puberty, she has thirty thousand ovas are there. All these ovas were arrested at metaphase one. Uh, no, meiosis one, metaphase one. So now FSH we are talking about. So FSH we are talking about that was the hormone. So, what is the role of FSH hormone? So, these arrested ovas, these arrested ovas, FSH hormone. So, generally, when it is releases in adolescent years after reaching the puberty, that means releasing of FSH hormone and triggering of these arrested, you know, uh, ovas into meiosis two. Is nothing but a FSH hormone role. Understand? So now this is triggered. Triggered means what happens under the influence of FSH. So by post birth, post birth or adolescent years, adolescent years. So releasing of FSH hormone made this two n into n n. Understand? So this also. N N. So N N. But here, this these are all the two daughter cells. These are all the two daughter cells. That means overall there are four daughter cells should be present. Four daughter cells to be present. So this F S H hormone made that. So it should be given two cells. All this cytoplasm is shared by the another one. Okay. So here in this case. One might be a polar boy. So while arresting this stage, okay. So before birth, if this mitosis happen into two daughter cells, one of the daughter cell as unable to survive, it enter into a polar boy. So another one survives, and it this ova only in adolescent under the influence of FSH, it divide into two daughter cells. That means this process is stopped because it became a polar body and it died out. So I told you like how these uh, two three millions are convert into thirty thousand. So when they are divided into mitosis, some are making into polar body. Thereby total number reduced. And these two n, only one is survived. Another one became a polar body. Another one became a polar body. That means so here if it is not the polar body, two n two daughter cells should be coming, and each one has twenty three chromosome. Because of this, it became a polar body and it died out. Two daughter cells got missing, and it got stimulated by the FSH hormone to divide into meiosis two. Meiosis two should be result into two daughter cells, but here due to unequal division of the cytoplasm, unequal division of the cytoplasm, so one daughter cell survives, another one became polar body. So this is how polar body's formation happened before the birth. Polar body formation happened after the arrested metaphase one stimulated into metaphase two, where cells has to be divided into two daughter cells. One daughter cell receive more maximum cytoplasm, another daughter cell receive less cytoplasm, and it could not survive. This is the only one egg, uh, you know, survived and released that we call as a ovulation process. So ovulation process are releasing of ova. So here there are some kind of technical terms are there. So arresting of this one, so arresting of this one we call as a primary oocyte. Primary oocyte. 
So primary oocytes are present in a female since her embryonic stage. Okay, all the primary. That means in a adolescent girls before before FSH hormone triggering any uh, ova. Those are all primary oocytes. Primary oocyte ovas. So once uh, they even this one, this is called secondary oocyte. Understand? So this we call as a secondary oocyte. So this we call as a secondary oocyte. So primary oocyte was present in the female since her fetus stage. But secondary oocyte occurs only in adolescent age. Secondary oocyte resulted into the releasing of ova which has 23 chromosomes. So this is the oogenesis process. So oogenesis process begins with oogunium. So oogunium means it is the primordial cells. Or these are all the cells present in the ovaries and which were divided into mitosis which produces two daughter cells. One of the daughter cells became polar body, another daughter cell survives and these daughter cells enter into the meiosis 1, metaphase 1 and it got arrested. So these arrest has been continued till the woman reached to the puberty age or adolescent age. In During that adolescent age, under the influence of FSH hormone, it enter into the meiosis 2. So such a longer span of the time, the ovas got arrested in the cell division. The cell division had to be complete. So once the FSH trigger uh, 20 to 30, this kind of primary oocytes, the triggered uh, primary oocytes are only one survives, remaining dies out because of polar bodies and other reason that only survived one released into the polyopian tube. So this is the oogenesis or oogonium. Oogenesis means how the ovas are formed in the female body from birth to the releasing out of the body entire process we have to discuss so till now do you have any doubts so why female only releases one ova instead of four beans so in the primary oocyte itself one polar body develop when this primary oocyte survived uh, egg is transformed into a meiosis to secondary oocyte come into being during the secondary oocyte another polar body formed and only one ova survives so this is the female this is the female cytogenetics so female cytogenetics so what are all the external one so external one libia so libia majora Majora, Libya, Minora, Bartholin glands, Bartholin glands, and clitoris, and internal organs, internal organs, ovaries, fallopian tubes. Next, uterus where implantation generally occurs. Uterus. So generally, we will tell that womb. Womb means where the baby growing. That part in our uh, in female body we call as a uterus. Okay. So uterus. And fourth one is uterus is connected to vagina where the sperms are first released and it transferred into uterus. Uterus to follow up into here fertilization happen. Here fertilization happen. Here a fertilized uh, egg drawn into uterus where implantation happens. Implantation happens. So this is the female cytogenetics. So female serogenetics. Female serogenetics. So GnRH, FSH, LH, FSH, estrogen, LH, progesterone. Okay, so once fertilization, it is easy. Once fertilization, it is easy. 
So this is the zero genetics of the female reproductive system. So oogenesis, in nutshell, oogenesis. So oogenesis is the process of releasing ova. So and it is how it has arranged before the puberty and uh, no post puberty. So ovulium. So ovulium means fetal stage, the parent cell which has two young. So which undergo mitosis. Which undergo mitosis. Mitosis produces two daughter cells. Okay. So one daughter cell dies out as a polar body. Polar body. And it is only surviving. This we call as a primary oocyte. Primary oocyte. So these are all arrested. Uh, enter into meiosis 1, metaphase 1. Meiosis 1, metaphase 1. Metaphase 1. That is 2N only. So this is all before birth. Before birth. So these primary oocytes are further adolescent years. In adolescent years are post puberty. After birth, post puberty. After birth, post puberty. Or beginning of the puberty also that we call as a menarche. So this primary oocytes arrested at the metaphase 1 is triggered by FSH into two daughter cells. One is N, another one is N. So one became a polar body and one is released and it is fertilized with the sperm and it is called a zygote. Zygote. So this we call as a secondary oocyte. Secondary oocyte. So fertilized eggs are called secondary oocytes, not the primary oocytes. So this is all about the oogenesis process. Understand? So if you have any doubts, you can let me know. Understand? So we have three phases generally in female, uh, you know, cytogenetics. So what are all these? Fallopian phase. Follicular, follicular phase. So follicular phase means what? So these one triggering into, okay, these one triggering into meiosis 2 we call as a follicular phase. So it was done by FSH. Okay, once triggered under the ova set to ready, it is rele released into the fallopian tube under the influence of LH that we call as a luteinizing hormone or ovulation process. Ovulation process. Understand? So this is how three phases are there. So this is very uh, least important for the exam point of view, but one has to know there might be a hormonal. So zero genetics there might be focus on various hormones. So even you can see that this estrogen hormone, estrogen hormone, bring the various secondary sexual characters. Various secondary sexual characteristics or female activities also controlled by the estrogen hormone. So they might focusing on the the relevance of the estrogen hormone in female reproductive system also. So next one, male reproductive cytogenetics and serogenetics. Male reproductive so cytogenetics and serogenetics so male reproductive cytogenetics and serogenetics so what do you, what are all the various uh, you know male reproductive system is responsible for production of so production maintain and a transfer of sperms transfer of the sperms in the male reproduction system second thing is production of the testosterone hormone production of testosterone production of the testosterone hormone and third one is 
so it's chitus chitus and sexual activity through which fertility occurs sexual activity through which fertility occurs so these are all the three primary functions performed by a male reproductive system so production maintain and transfer of the sperms and fertility uh, no chitus or sexual activity through which releasing of the sperms into female body at the same time male reproductive system also synthesize the testosterone hormone which is responsible for many male activities in the body so what are all the internal and external so cytogenetics so cytogenetics so most of the female reproductive organs are female reproductive organs are so female reproductive organs are internally maximum all important ovaries fallopian tubes uterus vagina everything is present internally but male reproductive organs are male majority present outside majority found outside the body outside the body so what are all those organs so those organs are three in number so related to penis second one is scrotum testicles and testicles so these three are present outside the body only understand so female male cytogenetics has three primary organs penis scrotum and testicles so penis is generally used in the sexual arousal sexual arousal and participating in sexual activity releasing of ova into female body that is the penis function what about that scrotum scrotum is a pouch like so pouch like thing pouch like thing so it is a climate control here actually testicles are present climate control mechanism so climate control mechanism so these sperms production requires regulated temperature regulated temperature so inside the body there is higher temperature so due to the temperature if any sperm born they dies out so that's why so this is a scrotum is a elongated so elongated kind of uh, pouch so which whenever the testicles require a warmness it shortens whenever it has to be cool it elongates this is how it is a climate control mechanism so where sperms are required a you know uh, temperature lower than the bodily temperature if these testicles are present inside the body all the sperms are melted or they cannot survive so that's why these testicles which is the place of uh, producing the sperms they are present outside the body because the temperature is outside is less than the bodily temperature so this is the scrotum important and third one is testicles so testicles are also called as a testes they are all two in number so two in number okay each testicle has a bulky material called semini uh, seminal uh, uh, you know this testicles produces generally sperms as well as the testosterone sperms as well as the testosterone so this is the general uh, functions of testicles so the major majority of the work so seminiferous tubes we will discuss in the detail so sperms sperms are generally produced in the seminiferous tubes so seminiferous tubes so seminiferous tubes which are all the bulk material in each testis bulk material in each testis so it is which is a long coiled one long coiled one in each testis so these testis are producing the uh, this uh, semi seminiferous tubes are producing the sperms so these are all immature sperms immature sperms they were transported to outside there is a layer called epididymis so entire organs i am writing so this is externally internal things are we will see so internal things are like so testicles or testes each testes attached by 
ए रिंग काइंड ऑफ so here urethra presents here urethra presents so here seminal vessel seminal vessel presents so the seminal vessels seminal vessels so seminal vessels these two comes into the urethra canal okay so here there is a some prostate gland is there prostate gland prostate gland so now these are all the testes testes two testes are there so this we call as a epididymis so apd dimis so this we call as a vas deferens so vas deferens so this we call as prostate seminal vessels so this is the opening so this is the urethra opening so this is the bladder urine bladder urine bladder so this prenis has two works first one is urine related things second one is sperm related things so whenever the ovas are coming the urine is blacked whenever that urine are coming that uh, the tubes are vas deferens are blacked so these are all the internal organs generally internal organs are testes here so many uh, furous tubes are present which produce the sperms so every day millions of sperms are produced but these sperms are immature sperms so immature sperms so these immature sperms are transported into epididymis here they stored it so epididymis is responsible for maturing the sperms so maturing the sperms epididymis and these matured sperms are passed into vas deferens so vas deferens and here pro seminal vessel so they tractos so sugar like substance they add for the sperms and this fractos used for the nourishment so nourishment for the sperms this prostate gland secrete the gel kind of substance gel kind of substance so together that means the sperms are coming from vas deferens okay it is mixed by seminal vessel fluid that is called for, for nourishment purpose and this is further added by the prostate gland gel kind of substance together we call as a semen together we call as a semen which released during the sexual activity so this is the cytogenetics of the male reproductive system so external organs are scrotum scrotum penis and testes internal organs are so this testes epididymis vas deferens prostate gland seminal vessels and th these are all the things you have to write for this internal structure of the male reproductive organs so what are all the hormones are present so what are all the hormones are present in the male reproductive system so male reproductive system so that means serogenetics we are looking at the serogenetics same process for male and female same process so gnrh so fsh lh so gnrh it's happened in the hypothalamus and these are on the pituitary pituitary and under this hormonal influence testes produce testosterone hormone testosterone hormone this testosterone hormone is responsible for so maturation of the so maturation of the sperms 
मेल डिफ्रेंशिएशन मेल डिफ्रेंशिएशन सेकेंडरी सेक्सुअल एक्टिविटीज secondary sexual activities in males so this is the male so zero genetics what about that male so spermatogenesis So male spermatogenesis after zero genetics. So spermatogenetics. So spermatogenetics are starting with sperm uh, spermatogonium. So the original one, the parent or primordial cells we call as a spermatogonium. So spermatogonium. This spermatogonium undergoes mitosis. So here you should observe there is no polar bodies. Mitosis. It produces two daughter cells. So this we call as a primary spermocyte. So this is stage we call as a primary spermocyte. primary spermocyte this primary spermocytes are primary spermocytes are undergoes into meiosis 1 so undergoes into meiosis 1 meiosis 1 so so that two Cells are coming to being. So, two n, two n, meiosis one, metaphase one. Result two daughter cells. Two daughter cells are again undergoing to meiosis two. One n, one n, one n, one n. So one n, one n. So this is called secondary. Spermocyte. Secondary spermocyte. So what happened this one? It again act as a spermatogonium. So one is acting as a spermatogonium and one is acting as a primary spermocyte and primary spermocyte after entering the meiosis one, metaphase one, it related to the secondary spermocyte and finally it produces the four daughter cells. So these four daughter cells we call as a spermatozoa. So spermatozoa. <clears throat> so this uh, we call as a uh, spermatozoa. That means these are all the acquiring tail and everything. This we call as a spermatozoa. These four daughter cells we call as a spermatids. Spermatids. So these cells after acquiring the tail we call as a spermatozoa. Before acquiring the tail, we call as a spermatids. So this is all about the so spermatogenesis in male. So these are all least important for the exam, purely biology. So purely biology. But you need to have this knowledge of FSH, LH, HCG hormone, testosterone hormone. So further discussion of the so relevance of menarche, menopause and other fertility events. So relevance of so relevance of menarche, comma menopause and other biofertility events. Other biofertility events. So this is the question frequently coming in the exam frequently coming in the exam frequently coming in the exam to understand this one mean, meaning of menarche that is releasing of first menstrual cycle or onset of reproductive period 
so in a female child for the first time we call it as a menarche how it triggers what are the hormones involved how we to varies between the different individuals different uh, social groups or different countries what is the national average age so these are all the things we will discuss so these are all the things we will discuss in the upcoming chapters yes is that mayank yes are you uh, mayank or uh, any other one hello is that mayank so there is nothing like okay today we discuss about the serogenetics and cytogenetics Uh, as well as oogenesis and spermatogenesis so these are all purely biology in nature purely biology in nature so upcoming topics are generally considered as anthropology topics this is biology okay so tomorrow class we will discuss about the menarche menopause why it is varied between the individual varied between the different cultural groups varied between the nations what is the average of internationally what is the average of india within the average what is the menarche differentiation between the various states various cultural groups so these trends we will analyze that is anthropology anthropology basically a holism science how this biological events this menarche menopause and other things are biological events so though all the female are homo sapiens so some are reaching menarche at 12 years some are reaching at 14 years some are reaching like 11 years why this variation in the menarche the same time of menopause so some are at 45 years some are at 51 years they are getting the menopause so why this differences all are biological events but no two individual has the same day or same time they get the menarche and menopause and it varies between the societies also the reasons we will analyze the biological reasons cultural reasons or uh, you know environmental reasons so these questions are important for the exam so is that mayank or some other person hello who is this my means uh, almost we got over today's class and tomorrow this is the basics only in the next class we will deal about the exam centric concepts you can text me if you are in library or you could not able to speak you can text me what is your name okay i will meet in the next class